Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibre Tools and DIY channel. Recently, I was on a job where we were tiling a bathroom shower. Stick around so we can get some tips on how to do that. All right, so we're getting ready to finish up this tile job in this shower right here. This is an apartment building. Um, the tenant just, either they moved out or they passed away, I'm not too sure. But when that happens, the apartment pretty much gets stripped of everything, carpet, countertops, brand new appliances, sinks are put in. This whole bathroom is being redone. Um, so just making sure that thin set is nice and creamy before we apply it to the wall and the tile. So let's do this. If you're wondering if we're gonna tile the floor as well, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna put some laminate flooring there. But if we were gonna tile the floor, we would probably tile the walls first, then the floor. Reason being, if something drops on your newly tiled floor and breaks it while you're tiling the walls, you know, you could drop tile or whatever onto that new tile floor. That wouldn't be good. So I would suggest if you're doing it yourself, if you're doing the floor, then the walls, tile the walls first, then the floors, because the last thing you want to do is replace tile you just put down. And if you're wondering how much tile you need, just take one tile, figure out the area of that tile, that's length times width, then divide that number by 144 to convert it to feet. Then you want to divide the total square footage of the space by the single tile square footage. That's the tile you just converted to feet. So let's say for example, a single tile it's six inches long by six inches wide. So you multiply that to get the area. That area would be 36 square inches, right? Or inches squared. So you take that 36 square inches and you divide that by 144. That'll give you 0.25 square feet. So as you can tell, dividing it by 144 converts the inches to feet. Then you look at the total square footage of where you want to put your tile. Let's just say it's 60 square feet. So you take that 60 square feet and divide it by the single tile square footage, which is 0.25 square feet. And that'll equal 240 tiles that you'll need to cover the area. Now that math was just to cover one flat area, like a floor area. But when you're dealing with a shower, you're talking about the back wall, the shower head wall, the side wall. You gotta get the square footage of all those walls and do the math just like I did just now on every single surface. So you got about three surfaces to do it on. And then you add the square footage up of all the walls, right? Total them up. And whatever that total square footage is, that's gonna be divided by the single tile square footage. And it's always recommended that you get about 10 to 20% more tile than you actually need, just in case stuff happens. Like you may break or crack tile while you know transporting the tile or even laying the tile. You may need to cut around corners or you may need to replace loose tile. And it's even good to have extra tile because maybe someday in the future, a tile may break or get damaged and you have that extra tile on hand. When using a wet tile saw, obviously you wanna keep your hands out of the path of the cut line. Always keep them on the sides of the blade, but you wanna cut slow and smooth. If you're doing that and it's still not a smooth cut, you may need to adjust the water flow of the saw. One of the hardest parts of tiling is removing the old tile. Just remember, when you're doing this stuff, you wanna wear the proper safety equipment like safety goggles, stuff like that, because the tile chips, or you know the chips that the tile is gonna produce when you chisel it off, the old tile I'm talking about, can fly in your eyes or something like that. It's the same thing when you're cutting tile with the wet tile saw. Uh, you're gonna have chips flying too and um, you definitely don't want them going in your eye or anything like that. So um, have the proper safety equipment. You're definitely gonna need a hammer, a pry bar, some kind of scraper, a chisel. So that's for that part of the process, the tiling process. And then as far as installation, you're definitely gonna need tiles. It's not a bad idea to have a cutoff wheel or what's called an angle grinder to cut contours in your tile in case you need to fit it around a pipe or something like that. 
that's the case here. The shower pipe was causing the tile to sit unevenly on the wall. So we used the cutoff wheel to cut out the contour of the pipe so the tile can sit evenly on top of it. So angle grinders, cutoff wheels, hole saws, you're gonna need those when you're cutting holes in tile. Uh, you're gonna need spacers, you're gonna need thin set uh, or adhesive. You're gonna need a grout float. Uh, you're gonna need a trowel, bucket, maybe a tile cutter. That's different from a tile saw. You're gonna need some kind of pencil or marking device, tape measure, sponges, uh, levels like spirit levels, tile trim or the tile edging as you call it, grout, mixing bucket, a mixer with a, uh, some kind of power mixer. It can even be a drill you use to mix the thin set up. And then also you might need some wood as well. Now, as far as the cost to tile a shower, well, for one, most of that cost is the tile itself. Tiles can range from a dollar per square foot for basic, you know, glossy white subway tile to $50 to $75 per square foot for designer artisan tile. But you should expect about five to $10 per square foot for tile and just add another four to $6 per square foot for uh, other materials. And then of course, if something happens, right, unexpected, you know, Murphy's Law, you might want to have about two to 600 bucks for any, uh, any repairs.
Hey guys, if you appreciate the content, hit that like and subscribe button. Don't forget to share and I'll see you guys next time.